Hi, as I'm dressing up like my history teacher today, I decided to talk about IGCSE history and how to revise and study for the content. Um, a little bit about me. I did my IGCSE in 2020, the summer series, except for my English FLE I did in October. So technically, my history grade is teacher assessed grade, but I do think my grade improved a lot throughout the years, and apparently I think I have some credibility to talk about this exam, so here it goes. This video is going to divide it into three parts, how to study the content, how to revise the content, and how to answer exam questions, aka exam techniques. So first, how to study the content. Now if you're like me, a student who would spend a ton of time on the aesthetic of your notes, hence my history notes, as you can see. It's quite pretty, if I may say so myself, but I'm here gonna tell you, these are not worth your time on. Maybe just a little bit at the start, but what's really worth it is the practicality of your notes. Another way to study for the content is to listen to it over and over and over again. And this includes record your own voice and listen to it every now and then if you can bear the cringe and embarrassment of your of listening to your own voice. Or what I did was to go to Mr. History.com and he covers all the history content of IGCSE and even up to A levels. Since it's specifically targeted at IGCSE history, you will know exactly what you need to know and you can just listen to it on the go and he makes it quite fun too with the music he adds also he puts emphasis on certain words like some keywords or some key points so you won't lose track in the monotony of a person speaking about history so I went to Apple Podcast and downloaded all the episodes of IGCSE history and I remember at the start I was listening to it at one time speed at first to just to familiarize with the content and his way of speaking and later I sped up the podcast to cram more things at once so yeah through this process in the exam room you will realize what he has been saying has already been ingrained into your brain so adding on with studying with the podcast I find also another website johndeclare.net really useful it's not specifically targeted at um, IGCSE students, I think it's more towards GCSE, but th still there's a lot of crossover about the content. The, on the website, it has nice summarized points with details, and for each topic, it has a nice revision sheet, which is extremely useful since it uses the toggle function, which is really good when it comes to active recall. Another part is to do past papers, but when doing them, you should categorize each question into topics and chapters to see what are the common questions that usually come up. And of course, you can write the full answer for practice, but for me, when I'm trying to go through every past papers, I just plan my answer in points, which saves time and you can you can do more questions at the end. It, it's, it's easier to check with the mark scheme also. As I mentioned, to categorize each question into um, chapters and points, I recommend to do it on a Google Doc, like a huge Google Doc, and just name it as a IGCSE history question bank or something. Because I did it on paper, and it's not really the nicest thing to go through, it's really hard to find specific questions. Unlike on Google Doc, you can just Control F and search the topic you want to revise. Now we got those two covered. Let's move on to the last part. How to answer the exam questions. Firstly, paper one, the core material. In this paper, you will answer three questions. Part A, part B, and part C. These three questions should be kind of about the same topic it should be in the same chapter but like with different aspects of it now part a 
it was full marks and it is purely knowledge based. It doesn't need analysis at all. So normally it's one mark per, per point, so totally four points needed. Your answers to this should be presented in short statements. You'll be wasting time if you are turning this into an essay. Sometimes they also count one more mark for development point, but I would recommend just, just to stick with laying out four points. Since for development points, they're looking for very specific stuff about it, and it's harder to get marks on that. And moving on, part B of the question. It is six marks. It has both your knowledge and your understanding to the content. You will get one mark for explaining a relevant point, an additional mark for explaining and analyzing it fully, which means potentially you can gain two marks for one point, but you also have to expand it upon it, of course. Now, again, with this question, you shouldn't spend too much time on it and turning this into an essay. Also, you can write a paragraph for each of the points you're going to cover so the examiner can keep track of your answer. And now question C, which is the big question of this paper. It was 10 marks and you basically have to write an essay on it. I normally start with an introduction paragraph just to get your main points across and clears your mind what you need to say in this answer. You should have a clear structure of this answer so the, so the examiner can keep track of your points. For this question, you must include both sides of the question. You must show why you agree with the question and why you disagree with the statement. Ideally, you should cover at least two points for each side of the question. So sometimes I go for three agreement points and then to disagreement point. You should also expand upon your points and why it supports your statement or doesn't support your statement. At the end, you should also give a conclusion and you can finally decide which side you're on, like whether you agree or disagree with the question. You should usually go for the sides that you have the most points on, so that way you can secure your mark for the conclusion. Moving on, let's talk about paper 2, the source analysis. In this paper, you will get around 10 sources, which include pictures as well as extracts. A set of questions will follow asking you on about particular sources and compare sources with each other. There is a final question at the end where it addresses all the sources and where you have to include all the sources in your answer. Here, I will give you 5 tips on how to answer the source analysis analysis questions. Tip 1. Look at the provenance. It will include when the paragraph or the comic is produced or where the text is from. So obviously for a source that's written in the USA, it will have a bias towards the US. Uh, an extract from the history book usually should be objective, but you should also look at where the book is from. Speeches and quotes are most likely to be biased and to be persuasive to, to misguide the general public. So yeah, so those are not that reliable. Tip number two, when doing the questions, you should find the big message of each source, as well as the smaller subsidiary messages. The central message or the big message will be the thing that's quite obvious and easy to look at. But the subsidiary smaller points is where you need to look carefully and think about the nuances in between. What is really the artist hinting at or the speaker referring to? Next one. When you're answering the question, you should never, never summarize or explain what is happening in the source. Never describe or retell what is happening in the source. The examiner will know very well of each source as long as you reference which source it is. So your job is not to explain the examiner about the sources again, but rather to answer the questions relevantly. For each question, you should somehow show both sides of the argument. Each question will ask you to evaluate the source in some particular directions. You should evaluate the fact that whether it is reliable and whether why it is isn't but include both sides. 
you are expected to explain why the source is reliable or why it isn't reliable, or how these two sources compare and contrast, agree and disagree. And the final tip, this is kind of coming from a literature student, but when you are analyzing each source, you should always support your point with a relevant fact from your core material or a quotation from another source. Also, just as a bonus tip, you should always think about the context of this, each source when answering the questions, as well as the desired effect on the audience or people who should be receiving it at that time. And finally, paper four. It is the paper for your depth studies. Please make sure you know which country you're doing your depth study on. For this paper, you only have to answer one question, but the question was 40 marks. Oh. So you really need to know an in-depth knowledge of your depth study. Well, that you need to know pretty well around the topic of your depth study. You need to make a strong argument whether this this subject or event or the per person was significant. You can support your argument using the actions of certain events and the development of it. Also, you should show your awareness of other factors that you may or may not think it's less signific significant on your argument, on your main subject. But you should also include how it is connected to your main subject. And with that being said, good luck with all your studies and I will see you next time. Goodbye!